Hey everybody, it's Mikkel Moose. And so in my last video, I mentioned that I might be doing something Sleeping Beauty inspired. And you guys were expecting a pink Sleeping Beauty dress, weren't you? I already did the Sleeping Beauty dress. And if you guys want to see that, I can link it down below. But if you want to make it in pink, just use pink fabric. I'm not going to do a whole video for that. The other outfit I think you guys were expecting was the peasant dress that Sleeping Beauty or Aurora wore when she was Briar Rose, which is a really cool dress, and I was thinking about making that. If you guys want to see that, comment down below. Um, let me know, because that is something that I'm kind of curious to try to make. Uh, so, But no, it's, it's none of those. It's none of those. What's left, you ask? Well, there's, there's plenty of different outfits in that movie, but the one that I was more interested in trying to make was something that was a little bit more complicated, and that is Maleficent's dress. So that is what this video is, is me making a Maleficent-inspired dress. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need some dark thread and a needle. Also, you could use a sewing machine. Um, Velcro, scissors, black fabric, and purple fabric, and an 18 inch doll. So I'm going to start by taking my mound of black fabric everywhere. We're going to do the uh, row portion. It's just getting all dark now because I'm throwing the black fabric up. I don't know. So what we're going to want to do is have it go from the top of her chin to past her feet. I'm going to measure this out just so you guys know kind of what length we're going to cut it at. So it's about 14 inches from the neck to her toes. We're going to add on an additional 2 inches. So we're going to cut it at 16 inches because we want to have some seam allowances and just some wiggle room. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dolly burrito. If you've watched my shows before, you know what I mean when I say a dolly burrito. I'm going to put her arms down and I'm going to wrap her up in the fabric until both ends overlap. I'm just going to hold it with my hand where it overlaps and that is where I will need to cut it. A 16 by 16. So Maleficent's cloak is going to close up in the front. So this is where the Velcro is going to go. So that's where we're going to keep our seam. Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where we need to put our armholes. And by, I'm just going to put her in the burrito, the burrito of fabric. And then I'm just going to leave, I don't know if you can see this, but there's the squares up at the top of the fabric. I'm just going to leave that kind of angle up there, that excess fabric. And I'm just going to kind of feel where her arm begins, and I'm going to go down just past the shoulder joint, just right here, and I'm going to cut a hole there. You don't have to do a giant hole. Um, start small, and if you need to make it larger to fit her arm through, you can always make it larger. But just start small. Now that I've gotten one arm through, I put it on the arm. And then I'm going to burrito wrap her one more time, find the second spot for her arm, and cut the hole again. When you're cutting the second armhole, you want to make sure that her arm is in through the first hole, because if you don't, then you'll have too much excess fabric in the back or in the front. Even doing it this way, you get a little bit of excess fabric in the back and the front, but that's okay. Bye. But now we've got just like this big long thing. And this is the beginning of our Maleficent outfit. Okay, so now I've gotten her hair up and out of the way. Uh, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the top off. I'm going to put it wrong side out, like a half inch up from where we put the hole. I'm going to do a diagonal line at a very low slope 
just to get this tiny corner here so it's not her so there is a shoulder blurb can't speak I'm gonna do that on both sides mm -hmm. okay. so now that I finished doing that what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut off that corner that of excess fabric and it's just this itsy bitsy little triangle it's not giant or anything um, and that's on both sides like I said so here's what we have going on right now and the dress is a little lopsided on the bottom I'm actually gonna fix that right now all right so Maleficent's dress is really big really flowy and right now this is just kind of like a tube so to make this back piece like even bigger what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line it up in the front as best I can, flip the doll over, and then I'm going to center it down her back, and I'm going to cut up. I'm going to cut up to where her bottom begins, which is also about eight inches up. Then I'm going to set my doll aside. I'm going to take out my black fabric and we are going to cut out a triangle with a rounded bottom and we are going to do that um, obviously the edges are going to be at eight inches or a little bit longer. We'll go with nine inches just so we have that seam allowance. So we'll go nine inches down. Yeah. Actually, we're just going to go 10. We're just going to go crazy. Going 10 inches down on both sides. From the point of my triangle to the bottom, it is 12 inches, and the sides are 10. So that's what we have right now. It's this big, like a baseball diamond. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that big triangle that we just, or that big slat that we just put into our cloak, and I'm going to go from the bad side where we have the seams already and I'm going to sew from the top down on both sides so I'm adding this piece of fabric into what we have right now so now with that new back piece added on we've got more of a train going on so you guys can see that we got a butt like a train on the back of the dress so it's much more flowy in the back all right so I decided to move ahead and do the first sleeve all by myself because I was really having trouble figuring out how to make this huge sleeve and still have free movement and be able to just, yeah. Okay, so anyway, what I figured I would do is what I came up with is actually a sleeve that is not connected. So her hand can move around freely underneath well it is connected but the bottom pieces aren't connected so it's just kind of like flopped over her arm seems a little weird but then I when I was thinking about connecting it to her dress then I realized that her limp her arm movements would become really limited um, because these big pieces of fabric are stationary so I thought I would leave these as open and just connect it um, in just one one the top portion. So it's just connected on the top portion and um, I will show you how I did that. I'm going to take the big piece of fabric and I'm going to find an edge. Find an edge, find an edge, find an edge. Found one. Alright, so I'm going to fold it over actually. Where'd my measuring thing go? So technical, right? So the side with the fold is going to be seven inches. A little cut there just so I know where to go. And then it's going to be 13 inches long. So the whole thing is going to be seven inches wide and 26 inches long if you wanted to just cut it out as a singular piece instead of folding it over. And then on the side that will be facing the doll, I'm going to go in 
about a quarter of an inch, not a lot. And I'm just gonna trim off both sides. And then about two inches from the top, I'm gonna stop. All right, so I cut off a half inch strip all the way down. And then up here, I've got um, an inch on each side of the fold or two inches, just a little nub, nubbin sticking out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold over each side and then I'm going to sew it on the sewing machine, um, not just on the side where the fold is. We're going to leave this edge raw because we're going to end up chopping that up and uh, adding some purple accents. So I'm going to sew that right now. So now that I have a both sides sewn on the top with the little flap, I'm going to take it from the good side and I'm going to take that little flap and I'm going to pull it through the armhole. Then I'm just going to flip it so I'm dealing with the bad side, the side where all your stitches are showing. And I'm going to hand sew this on. Couple notes for you. I did tie a knot um, a couple times throughout while I was sewing just so that it's a little bit more secure on there should if one's area break, the whole thing doesn't fall off. Um, and also the little flap is going to be at the top of the shoulder, not the bottom or the side. Make sure it's up at the top. Try to center it best you can. So now we have both of the sleeves and I am going to start working on the collar, which is the part that scares me. All right, so I'm gonna cut a 13 inch long piece of fabric and I'm going to have it be three inches wide. So like this. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the purple fabric. I've got my purple fabric, I've got my black fabric. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew, um, I'm gonna take it and put it good side to good side. And I'm going to sew one side, the top, the bottom, and then halfway along the, I'm gonna sew, sew three and a half sides. Uh, so one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna leave a little opening so I can flip it right side out. So good side to good side, get sewing. Okay, so now that I've got that all sewed, I am going to flip it the right side out. All right, so now we've got this little nubbin on the corner here after we finished flipping it right side out. So we're gonna stick those rough edges in there and then we're just gonna sew it with the sewing machine. All right, so obviously you probably wanna use a matching thread, but I didn't switch over. Um, and I'll just use this part to sew onto the bottom so you really won't be able to see that too much. So my, before we go and attach it to the top, we've got a whole bunch of excess fabric. Like it's going straight up into our doll's face. And so I'm going to kind of cut a little bit of that off just so I don't have to mess with it. And so I'm just gonna cut it so it's gonna fall underneath her chin. So now I take, taking that back off my doll and I'm gonna fold it all up. All right, and then I'm going to take my collar, which I don't know how we're, I don't know how well it'll stand up. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And so now I'm going to, it's gonna be purple on the inside, black on the outside. So what we're gonna do is put the black up against the black so then we can pop the collar and you're gonna do this kind of like the uh, all along the bottom so when we pop the collar the uh, words fail me all the time so when we pop the collar the the seam is on the inside where we're not really gonna see it as much so you're just gonna kind of line it up And obviously you don't want more purple on one side than the other, so try to get it as 
even as possible. If it leaves some black up front, that's totally okay. We'll get around to fixing that. So you'll end up with something looking a little bit like that, but then you're gonna go and sew that on. So with the collar on, I'm now realizing that it is probably way too long. The 13 inches, nah. So as you can see, when you try to close it, it's like all way up in her face. So I think for you guys, uh, doing like a 12 or 11 inches would probably work out a lot better. But for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fold back some of that excess fabric and just sew it over like that. So that way it's not all in her face. You can see her face a little bit more and when you close it, you get the full frame face. It doesn't stick out quite like at the angle that Maleficence does, but it's the best I could do. <laughs> For the next step, I'm doing the purple that goes down the front of the robe. And so what I did was I cut out strips of fabric that were two inches wide. And these are about, I think, I think they were like 13 inches long. Um, but really all I did was I just set it up next to the cloak and I made sure that it was a little bit longer than the cloak was and it doesn't really matter if it's extra long um, because that excess fabric on the bottom we can cut off at a later date but so all I did was I folded over the top at a slight angle and you're going to do one going down and one going the other way and then I folded over the side and then I sewed along the, just one side so the end piece is angled up at the top and then all the way down and then I've got this excess fabric that I left raw and the bottom is left raw and then what I'm going to do is so once again all the way down towards the bottom on the front and then I'm going to fold over the excess fabric and then I'm going to sew that all the way down and you know I could probably do that in just one sewing straight down just fold it over and sew straight down and then on the bottom I'm just gonna sew the excess fabric I'm gonna bend it over and sew across there all right so I finished putting those purple streaks on and then I also did a kind of preliminary putting of the velcro I didn't finish sewing it all the way it still pops up um, and one of the things that I realized is on this side you can totally sew with your sewing machine with this side, you're actually going to want to end up doing it by hand, which is what I started doing, just because uh, I don't want the stitches showing through on this portion. Uh, you could do it before you start, you put this, you sew it on, put the Velcro on before, that way you don't have the stitches on that side. Um, so the next part I think we're going to work on is the sleeves, which are going to have those ragged edges with purple uh, hues. and to do that we're going to need our purple fabric so first step first I'm going to cut out some purple fabric I'm going to do a strip that's roughly the same length as uh, as one side of the sleeve so we've got like a big strip of purple fabric here and then I'm going to I'm going to cut this up just making big loose dangly pieces of fabric falling from this so and then we'll sew it to the sleeve i know we made the sleeve extra big so we could cut it onto the black but now that i'm thinking about it i think this might be a, a better way to go about it uh maybe not and all i'm doing is i'm just kind of cutting going up a little bit cutting diagonally in. It's really hard doing it like this. Um, and then I'm moving up a little bit. So it looks like that. Now that I have my purple pieces that are all like ragged on the edge, I did four of them. Um, or you could just do like two really long ones, but after sight, 
Um, and instead of sewing all of these individual pieces, uh, because that would be a lot of sewing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull on the fabric, just kind of make it curl in on itself just a little bit. Um, that way you don't see quite so much of the ragged edges. But even if you can see the ragged edges, it, it works with this dress. I mean, it is supposed to be ragged edges. So I'm just going to just give each one of these a little tug, pull the fibers a little bit. I think this is going to be like the longest video I've ever made. All right, so what I want to do then is I'm going to fold over the edge here so we have a nice clean line on the black fabric. And then I'm going to take a piece of our ragged stuff and uh, I'm going to make sure that the angle of all of the dangles is pointing downwards. And I'm going to uh, sew that in on the side here. And then I'm going to take another one, match it upright, and then sew it onto the back like that. And I'm going to do that on uh, all both sleeves. How cool is that? Like, I know it's still ragged looking, but oh, this is turning out really cool. So now we're going to put the purple ragged edges on the bottom. And just to stay consistent with what I did with the sleeves, I'm going to uh, just take some scraps of fabric. And I'm just going to do it on that back flap that we've added. You see that? This piece here. I'm just going to sew the purple ragged scraps. So we did the ones on the sleeve going down. We're going to do the ones on the back, kind of more um, in a triangle, just straight out. And so to do that, I'm just going to take the fabric and just kind of cut out little triangles. So we get like little spikies. And so I'm just going to do that to a bunch of different pieces. And I'm going to sew it on that back piece. And I'm also going to fold over that edge and sew that and I'm going to fold over the edges in the front. I'm just going to leave those black. Alright, so I finished sewing on the back piece. And so now we've just got some purple fabric flowing off the back there in spikes. So you can kind of see. And so now this portion of the dress is finished. And so now we need to start working on the headpiece. And that is going to be fun. <laughs> so for that, we're going to need some black fabric wrap right here. And what I'm thinking of doing here is there needs to be a strap going around her neck. And then that goes into the headpiece. It's going to frame her face. And then she's going to have the two big horns and the spikes coming up off the sides. So I'm going to start with just keeping it simple. I'm just going to do that strap. So for that, we're going to have to measure our doll's neck. And that comes to six inches, so I'm going to bake it seven inches. Just so we have some extra, uh, you know what, actually, I'm going to make that eight inches, just so we have some extra room um, for seam allowances and to attach Velcro, so we have a little bit of an overlap. And then do seven inches, or eight, we're going to do eight inches, and then... We only need it to be about about an inch to cover her neck, but I'm going to make it two inches so that way we have some seam allowance to work with. So with this piece, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, fold over the bottom and sew that, and then I'm going to fold over the sides, and then I'm going to uh, add the Velcro, um, and then we will leave the top unsewn because we're going to use that to attach to the next piece. So this is what we have right now. This is a little piece that Velcro's around her neck. And it's way too long on the front. But for right now, I'll just fold it over. Now comes the hard part, trying to figure out um, how to fit it around her head. I'm going to take the bun off. So I just need to get a kind of an idea of how wide her head is. Um, 
so 11 and a half inches around her head. And yeah, so 11 and a half inches. So we'll bump that up. We'll do like 13 inches. And then from her chin to the crown of her head is six inches. So I'm going to do, oh no, it's stuck in her hair. Okay. So I'm going to do um, 13 by, 13 by like seven. All right, for the hood, what I've got here is two seven by seven and piece, inch piece of fabric. Um, the only time I've ever done this was with really stretchy fabric, so I'm just hoping this will work out. Uh, this stretchy fabric gave me a really a lot of leniency. So as you can see, the seven by seven inch fabric is way too big for her head. And considering it's only going to cover the back portion of her head, um, I'm just going to kind of line it up, get an idea of where I need to cut. I need to cut off probably about two inches up front, and then I'm going to kind of angle the top. I'm going to keep it about an inch away from where her head would be. So I'm just going to cut the two inches off the side. So I guess we're going from a seven by seven. To a five, five by seven. There. Now I'm gonna cut there. All right. So now I have this little fabric. I curved the edge there, and then I, I'm gonna curve it just a little bit up at the front. And this is gonna be way too big. I already know, but because I need to size it down slowly, I'm gonna sew this. And then I'm going to try it on her head, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so you can't see because I've used black on black, but I've sewed just this back curved portion. I've left the front and the bottom totally open, so we're just making a hood. So now I'm just going to put it right side out, and I'm going to put it over her head. And I'm thinking that... The back is sticking up way too much, so I'm going to sew that a little bit closer down. So now I've gone down a little bit more. We'll try that out and see how that looks. All right, in my opinion, the front looks a bit better. But we still got a little bit of a lump in the back of her head, so I'm going to sew that down again. Okay, how's it looking? Excellent. I'm liking this much better. Okay. It's still a little weird in the back, but I think it looks a lot better. So next step, I'm going to fold over this edge here in the front, and I'm going to hem it. Okay, so I've hemmed the front now, and you know, I forgot to cut off all that excess fabric, so I'm going to do that now. And just because we don't want it bunching up in while she's wearing it, you know. So there's that. Now we need to attach our Velcroed collar piece to the bottom of this. And we're going to do that by going bad side. And then we're going to take our good side. Well, which one's a good side? And we're going to take our good side and line it up in the inside here. Yep. Hmm. It's a different size. That. Rewind. Because I forgot that, um, because of that ponytail, I had to make some ponytail allowance. And so I cut into the back there. Because the ponytail is pushing up against the back of um, her head, making the hat sit a little bit differently than it will when her hair is um, being used in a different way. I'm going to use her hair to fill the horns. Um, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but that is my plan. So I had to cut that off just so I can make the Velcro piece fit correctly. Silly me. All right, so... That's all sewed, so you just flip it out and you've got a lovely hem in the back. And 
Now, even though her ponytail is still going to be in the way, we're going to try it on and kind of squish her hair down. Now it's not fitting because of her ponytail. Meh. What do I do? That just looks horrible. Okay. You know what? We're going to move on to our next step because that will allow us to try the hood on and not have the hair be in the way. So I'm going to put the, he the hood on and I'm going to center it where I want it. And then I'm going to pick the spot where the horn is going to come. I'm going to take it off my doll's head because I obviously do not want to cut my doll's hair. And then I'm going to cut a little hole, just like we're doing with the armhole. This time it's going to be like a hair hole or a horn hole. And now I'm just going to do it again. And I'm going to center once again, figure out where I want it, try to keep it as even as possible. We don't want off-centered horns. And remember to start with the small holes and you can always make them larger. And then I'm just gonna split her hair evenly just so we can see what the horn, uh, the, the hood looks like on her. Oh, perfect. There we go. Look at that. Now the front, I think I will fold this over and stitch that back because it is sticking out a little bit and it looks kind of silly. Anyway, so the next step is actually creating the horns. And if I can find a... So much fabric. Okay. So I've got like a little piece of black fabric. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it, make a little sandwich. How high do I want these horns to be? How, how much hair do I have to work with? That's, that's a good question. I lost my measuring tape. So I guess like that high, maybe a little bit bigger, like to my fingers here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is cut the fabric out. Obviously I'm gonna add some seam allowance. And I'm just going for straight up horns. I know that Maleficent uh, has like a bit of a curvature to hers, but I don't think I'm ready for something that advanced. But this is kind of the big horn that I got going on. Uh, obviously it looks like a curvy triangle when you open it up. But I'm gonna do that again. Well, anyway, I'll cut that out later. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to sew from the top all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to do that twice. So I've finished sewing these and I've also tucked back those corners. Um, so now I'm going to flip them. Flip them. Sometimes when you get these ones that are like tapered, and your fingers aren't quite long enough, using a pen and obviously not having the cap open because you'll draw all over yourself is helpful. All right, I'm just checking to make sure that they're roughly the same length, which they in fact are. So we're in luck. And so now we've got these giant holes or these giant cones to attach to a very little hole. So I'm going to expand that hole slowly because I don't want to have a giant gaping space. So now we've got giant hole. All right. And so what I'm going to do is the same thing I do with the sleeves. So I'm going to take it from the good side with the good side hanging out. And I'm just going to stick it through. And then I'm going to flip it to the bad side. And from the bad side, I will sew by hand all the way around. All right, all right, all right. So I have finished adding the horns onto the top, and I believe I am finished. So excited! Okay, so now we're going to put on the outfit. There's the cloak and the cape. Very cool. Actually, 
I think this was like one of the most complicated things that I've ever done. And then for putting on the hat, I'm going to separate her hair into two pigtails. And actually, I need to take my hair down. It's a mess. Yeah. So, buns, two buns on the top of her head. And so now I'm just going to shove those into the horns and her hair will act as stuffing. Well, I say that this is probably not the best Maleficent dress. I could have probably... I mean, there's probably better ones out there, but for me, I'm actually really excited about this um, string. Obviously, she needs like a purple undersuit to go with it, but other than that, I think this turned out really cute um, and really evil. Um, but tell me how you like it down below in the comments. Do uh, you think this is a good uh, Maleficent dress, like a good in inspired dress by Maleficent? It took me quite a bit of time to actually finish this dress. Like, as you can see, like, during the video, my shirt changes <laughs> quite a few times. Um, and every time my shirt changes, it's a new day. Um, because I just keep working on it just a little bit by a little bit. And, uh, this was definitely something really new. Like, lots of new pieces to add to this. Um, so I hope you guys like this video. Um, and if you did, let me know by liking, and also you can comment down below if there's anything that you want to see me do. I have like a list of uh, requests and just like all these ideas that keep popping into my head that I really want to do, so, um, but I will definitely add it to the list of things that I need to do, so let me know. And also you can subscribe because I make videos like this irregularly, <laughs> but often. Um, so if you subscribe, that way you'll be notified every time I make one. And also, um, I'm close to 50 subscribers now, and I was wondering if there's anything you guys want me to do to celebrate having 50 subscribers, um, like a 50 subscriber special or something like that. I know that some of the other YouTubers do that when they get like, you know, one million subscribers, but I'm excited that there are other people who are interested in making doll clothes like I am. I'm just excited that I, like, there's other people who enjoy doing this other than me. Um, so if there's anything that you guys want, let me know. Just comment down below. Send me a message. You can tell me on Facebook. Um, yeah, so, uh... Where was I? I don't know. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope that you guys try making the Leficent dress. Even if you don't do it exactly like I did. Um, I'd love to see it. So you can uh, like tag your video below. Like, Let me see it. I'd, I'd love to see it. You can send me pictures on Facebook. It's um, Mikkel Moose on Facebook. Um, yeah. So super excited.